the Great Pyramid of Giza. Some scientists now believe it was already ancient before the first pharaoh was born. What have we learned about the huge granite spirit stones in the heart of the pyramid? Do they still perform some eerie function? It appears that the Giza pyramids were built as beacons by extraterrestrials as part of a landing corridor ending at the spaceport in the Sinai Desert. Many now believe our own space program has found a connection between the Great Pyramid of Egypt and pyramids found on other planets. We may discover that we, in fact, were the Martians. Experts now believe that the Great Pyramid is finally giving up some of its secrets because, like the Egyptians, we have turned our attentions to the skies. Is there an alien connection? The amazing and controversial answers in this chapter of the UFO Diaries. The pyramids of Egypt have been the objects of mystery and controversy for thousands of years. Scholars ancient and modern have argued over how they were built, why they were built, and who built them. The traditional view is that the pyramids were built by Egyptians of the fourth dynasty around 2500 BC as burial tombs for the pharaohs of that period. But is that view sustainable in light of what we know today? Many experts insist the ancient Egyptians could not have built these marvelous structures. And if they didn't, shouldn't we learn who built them and why? Archaeologists have told us for decades now that many of the Egyptians of 4,000 years ago worshipped the sun and believed in fantastic beings who came down from the sky to bring knowledge and wisdom to mankind. Is this a clue to the real origin of the pyramids? Do recent discoveries on other planets tell us more about the pyramids of Egypt? Is it possible that these structures were constructed by the same architects? Could the true nature of the pyramids hold the answer to the mysteries of mankind's existence on Earth? All of these questions are mere speculation without more evidence that the pyramids are anything more than what they appear to be. Three gigantic piles of carved stones on the edge of the desert at Giza. The largest has been attributed to the pharaoh Cheops, but it is more widely known as simply the Great Pyramid. Many scientists agree that physically, mathematically, and scientifically, the Great Pyramid of Khufu could not have been built. And yet, there it is, 42 stories high, covering an area the size of 10 football fields, an almost solid mass of intricately fitted stone blocks, each weighing two and a half to 10 tons. Enough stone to build 35 Empire State Buildings, with several tons left over. Its alignment to true north is almost perfect, and the precision of its construction has never been duplicated. But could the Egyptians of over 4,000 years ago have built such a magnificent structure? Or should we look for a more advanced civilization behind the pyramids? The Greek historian Herodotus established the traditional view when he visited Egypt in the 5th century BC and wrote that Egyptian crews of 100,000 men, replaced every three months, built the Great Pyramid in 20 years. But is that possible? To build the Great Pyramid in 20 years, as some archaeologists claim, would have meant setting one of those huge stones every three and a half minutes, 24 hours a day. That would require a technology we don't have today. But getting the stones in place was only part of the problem. How did they manage to get these massive stones from the quarries to the building site? There is a widespread general belief, which Hollywood has helped to promote, that hundreds of thousands of slaves were used to build the pyramids. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Egyptians of the fourth dynasty were neither a formidable military nation nor a very aggressive one. But even if they were, there were not enough potential slaves within a 5,000 mile radius to have supplied the workforce needed. But if there was not enough manpower available, how could the work have been done? Even if the builders used some kind of clever machinery to help them get the great blocks into place, Egyptologists still disagree on what kind of device that could have been. The generally accepted academic viewpoints are divided equally between the rollers and the rampers. These two theories are being taught in the schools right now as facts when they're not even substantial theories. With the ramper school of Egyptology, we are asked to believe that a mile long ramp was built, rising in slope as the pyramid increased in height. Actually, it would have required more effort to build the ramp than to build the pyramid itself. 
there would have been some six billion pounds of construction garbage to get rid of afterward. If the ram theory is discredited, the remaining explanation is that the blocks were rolled on logs. But does that theory survive close scrutiny? Moving a given stone in this manner can be demonstrated, but some rather obvious consideration should have dispelled this notion long ago. The only trees available in ancient Egypt were date palms, and as a food source, it's unlikely they would have been cut down. Importing logs would have required more shipping than Egypt has ever possessed in its entire history, just to transport the 25 million trees needed. Next, it's virtually impossible to roll a log on stone ship roads. But even if they could be rolled, the great weight of the stones would have crushed the logs to pulp within a very short distance. The traditional explanations of the origin of the pyramids have been accepted for years. But should we carefully re-examine those long-held notions? The discrepancies between the theories and the facts seem to demand it. Amazingly, the sciences of geology, mathematics, and astronomy seem to reach their zenith with the construction of the Great Pyramid. Construction techniques were used that can't be duplicated today. How could this be? What did the builders of the Great Pyramid know that we don't? More to the point, where did they learn it? And what new scientific evidence is there that suggests an alien connection? The astonishing answers when we return. However the Great Pyramid was built, one thing seems certain. Tremendous power of some sort had to be employed. Since the ancient Egyptians, so far as we know, were dependent solely on muscle power, and that seems insufficient to the purpose, what was the force that put all those gigantic stone blocks so carefully into place? And keep our minds open to perhaps at some point learning that this is a very real possibility that other civilizations, other beings, maybe perhaps from other planets, solar systems, or galaxies, assisted the Egyptians in the construction of the pyramids. Supposing that some traveling race from another world did in fact build the pyramids, did they leave any clues as to the purpose of these structures? Some experts say the answer lies in the foundation and orientation of the Great Pyramid. It's doubtful that ancient Egyptians had any knowledge of modern geology, and without this science, it's inconceivable that a structure this size could be built which would not crumble from lack of a proper foundation. Normally, it would just sink slowly into the ground. In modern construction, engineers find a settling rate of six inches in 100 years acceptable for office buildings. In 5,000 years, the Great Pyramid, weighing 14 billion pounds, has settled less than one half inch. This engineering marvel does suggest that whoever built the pyramids not only intended for the structures to remain as they were for millennia, but knew how to achieve that goal. And as engineers now tell us, they also knew how to keep the four sides of that giant edifice in almost perfect alignment. In modern construction, if the builders could maintain each side of the 756-foot wall within six inches of being perfectly straight, then it would be a tremendous accomplishment. But the Great Pyramid is only off of straight alignment by approximately one quarter of an inch. <laughs> That's totally impossible to duplicate in today's modern construction field. The Great Pyramid is evidence of a phenomenal knowledge of the science of astronomy. They could measure the day, the year, and the precession of the equinoxes. They knew that the Earth was a sphere, and they knew how to compute latitude and longitude accurately. The geographical orientation of the Great Pyramid of Giza is perhaps its single most amazing characteristic. Its sides run almost exactly from north to south and east to west. The deviation is within three arc minutes from true north. How could an ancient quasi-Stone Age culture have been able to determine true north? And while Europeans would argue for centuries about whether or not the Earth was flat, the ancient Egyptians, or someone thousands of years earlier, had calculated the longitude and latitude of the Earth as a sphere. Could it have been the Fourth Dynasty Egyptians? There have been two recent hard scientific discoveries about the pyramid in Egypt, which are not consistent with the Egyptologists' presumption that it was a tomb built by a king. Those two things are the radioactive dating, radiocarbon dating of the mortar from the top to bottom, which indicates that the top is a thousand years older than the bottom. Well, the other discovery was the radioactive sand found in 1987 in a set of chambers just behind the queen's chamber in the center of the pyramid. We have placed these two discoveries together to come up with a very consistent explanation for both. 
The strange curve, top to bottom, looks like an exposure curve. If you have a radioactive source in the center of the pyramid, the radioactive sand is exactly where we had calculated such a radioactive source to irradiate the pyramid might be found. Could it be that the Great Pyramid was constructed with what was simply routine technology to a race of beings capable of something like atomic power and interstellar travel? But as the evidence for an extraterrestrial origin of the pyramids begins to mount, we encounter what appears to be a warning not to explore the matter too deeply. Because some scientists claim they have encountered a powerful negative force inside the Great Pyramid, a force they called the Curse of the Pharaohs. The Curse of the Pharaohs story begins in the 1920s when two Englishmen, Howard Carter and Lord Cardivan, discovered the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Among the spectacular riches, Carter and Cardivan uncovered a tablet on which a dire curse had been written. Death will slay with his wings whoever disturbs the peace of Pharaoh. The warning did not make them nervous, but they were afraid their native assistants might panic and quit. They crossed out any mention of the tablet's discovery from their records and tossed it into the rubble. The whole incident might have been forgotten forever had not some three dozen scholars and others connected with the excavation died sudden and mysterious deaths. Cardivan and Carter were about to uncover the mummy itself when Lord Cardivan became deathly ill. Although suspecting an infection, doctors were uncertain of a diagnosis. He died before his son reached his bedside, and precisely at the moment of his death, an unexplainable power blackout occurred all over Cairo. Another victim was American architect Arthur Mace, who had been the person to rip out the last piece of wall blocking the entrance to the tomb. He died in the same hotel with the same symptoms as Caravan, feverish and in a sudden coma. The morning after Carter had shown his friend George Gould the tomb, Gould awoke with a high fever. By nightfall, he was dead. Radiologist Archibald Douglas Reed was the first to cut the mummy's wrapping and x-ray it. Reed died aboard ship on his way home to England. According to historians of the Curse of the Pharaohs, an eminent physician and biologist in Cairo, Dr. Ezidin Taha, claimed discovery of an ancient microscopic fungus that had probably survived in a dormant state for thousands of years, which could be controlled by modern antibiotics. Ironically, before he could prove his theory, Dr. Taha died in a freak automobile accident. Assuming that the pyramids were built by some race far more advanced than the ancient Egyptians, did they leave behind this strange fungus as a sort of burglar alarm? A measure to keep humans from tampering with the pyramid? What deadly secret lies in the forbidden heart of the Great Pyramid? Some believe the great granite slabs above the king's chamber, called spirit stones by the Egyptians, once served some fantastic function. Are they still functioning? Could they be the key to the real purpose of the pyramid? some amazing answers when UFO Diaries returns. We know that whoever constructed the Great Pyramid of Giza built it so that it would last a long, long time. Archaeologists tell us that the structure was originally covered with a protective stone coating, making the sides perfectly flat and smooth. That outer surface was broken apart and used as building materials during the construction of the city of Cairo. But the pyramids themselves still remain unharmed. And we've already heard how the pyramid is unique among all buildings on Earth in its refusal to settle into the ground, as other giant monuments inevitably must. And we've heard of the curse of the pharaohs, where something seemed to have been at work in killing all who explored too deep. Apparently, whoever built the pyramid wanted it to be left exactly as it was. But why? What was its purpose? And was its preservation important because they planned to use it again someday? In the early 1950s, translation was begun on a vast library of cuneiform tablets that had been discovered many years earlier in the ruins of the Library of Nineveh, the oldest written record known to science. One passage of the text seems to describe the pyramids of Egypt. Sumerian texts are believed to be over 10,000 years old. 6,000 years older than the Egyptians who were supposed to have built the pyramids. But if the Sumerian translation is accurate, 
The pyramids were already there before the first pharaoh was born. If all of this is true, then these ancient tablets may hold the answer to the true purpose of the pyramids. Dr. Zechariah Sitchin has spent years studying the mysteries of these Sumerian writings. Based on evidence provided by Sumerian texts, it appears that the Giza pyramids were built as beacons by extraterrestrials as part of a landing corridor ending at a spaceport in the Sinai Desert. An intriguing and exotic theory. But how could the pyramids be of use to travelers from another world? After all, as large as they are, they're not visible from outer space. Uh, some people suggested there is a vortex of energy uh, coming out of the great apex of the pyramid and, and that it actually expands in uh, diameter as you go higher above the pyramid. But for this theory to be credible, the pyramids would have to radiate energy, which an ordinary pile of stones simply does not do. But are the pyramids different in this way? The pyramids are essentially crystalline in structure, and therefore highly receptive to radio-like energy waves or even cosmic microwaves. The Great Pyramid at Giza, with its five granite slabs above the king's chamber, are what the ancient Egyptians called spirit stone, and they could have been a massive receiver transmitter tuned to some distant part of the universe of which we are still ignorant. There's a vortex of energy emanating from the apex of the pyramid, which actually expands in diameter as it rises higher and higher into the heavens. A simple example of this emanating apex energy was first demonstrated by British inventor Sir W. Siemens. When he drank from the wine bottle he brought along, he experienced a slight shock as the bottle touched his lips. The electrical activity intrigued Siemens so much that he took a wet newspaper, wrapped it around the bottle, converting it into a crude electrical accumulator, which most high school science students would recognize as a Leyden jar. Although we don't know why or how, the Great Pyramid seems to be an accumulator of energies. The only person of record of authority who still stands behind the assertion that there was radioactive sand was Dr. Ibram Nawawi, who gave in 1987 a discussion at an archaeological conference in Tennessee where a friend of mine, another archaeologist, literally heard him say with his own lips that they had found highly radioactive sand in the Great Pyramid. This does not compute as a low-tech structure but something much, much more intriguing. So might not the pyramids have been exactly what the ancient Sumerian texts seemed to claim? A sort of cosmic lighthouse for passing space travelers? As incredible as this may sound, it does seem to be the first explanation of the Great Pyramids that truly covers all the facts of its amazing construction, placement, and design. But is there any other evidence that the builders of these remarkable edifices were from outer space? These same Sumerian texts also refer to the Earth as the seventh planet, as if being counted from the outside of our solar system in toward the sun. Since Neptune and Pluto were only discovered in this century, how could the Sumerians of 10,000 years ago have known that the Earth is indeed the seventh planet? According to Dr. Sitchin, no one but space travelers coming to Earth past Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars could have considered Earth the seventh planet. Has modern science discovered any other reason to believe that the Great Pyramids were not the product of humans? Our space program may have discovered the most amazing connection of all, pyramids on Mars that correspond precisely to the pyramids of Egypt. That astounding discovery when UFO Diaries returns. Our quest for the truth about the Great Pyramid at Giza has now taken us into outer space and to the theory that beings from another world may have actually built this colossal monument for their own purposes. And now we begin to make our own voyages to other planets, exploring the vast reaches of our own solar system. But have our meager explorations to date helped us to find the answer to the pyramid mystery? Or simply raised more questions. The fundamental mathematical relationships communicated by the structures at Sidonia are now eerily replicated in the Giza complex here on Earth, including the very placement of the Sphinx. Even the key latitude of Giza, north of the equator, is now directly linked to the DNM pyramid latitude at Sidonia on Mars. So we can't tell who the builders were. There is a clue, however and it's in this mile-long, 1,500-foot-high humanoid face. 
Our thinking now, our team's thinking, is that that face is our face, or what we once were. So in a sense, someday, not now, but someday, we may discover that we, in fact, were the Martians. Are the so-called pyramids of Mars merely bizarre natural formations? Or are they the ruins of carefully constructed monuments that have been abandoned for many thousands of years? It does stand to reason that voyagers traveling across our entire solar system might place such markers or beacons on more than one world. Even so, the notion of extraterrestrial visitors constructing the pyramids of Egypt may seem to many to be simply too outrageous. Is it not possible, after all, that the ancient Egyptians were simply far more advanced than we'd previously believed? Don't the theories of alien pyramid builders ignore the ancient Egyptians and any contribution they might have made in the creation of the Great Pyramid? Certainly. But then, the Egyptians themselves seem to have ignored it also. The Great Pyramid was the greatest single undertaking in the whole history of mankind. And yet there is not one picture or drawing not one artifact, not one inventory or tally sheet to tell of its construction. The Egyptians left us some 3,000 years of written and pictorial history, covering virtually everything that happened in their culture, from babies being born to plowing and harvesting, building, weaving, sacrificing, praying, embalming, but nothing about the pyramids of Giza. Why? When you enter the Great Pyramid, it's devoid of these hieroglyphs. And the answer is, is simple and explained by the fact that the Great Pyramid was not built by Egyptians. The Great Pyramid was built by a group of people which are known as Hyksos, or shepherd kings, rulers of foreign countries that came into Egypt and constructed the Great Pyramid with better methodology. In light of all the new findings, experts seem to be reaching the same conclusion. Could it be that the proof of extraterrestrial visitation to Earth has, for centuries, been right there before our very eyes? Do Egyptian records fail to mention the construction of the pyramids because they were already there when the Nile Valley culture began to flourish? Is this the final proof that the pyramids are the keepers of a mystery that we may never solve? Until that time, the pyramids continue to stand silent and mysterious, refusing to allow their secrets to become a completed chapter of the UFO Diaries.